Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more In this video, I will continue on the journey of learning beat cutter from Ego. Um, I believe this is part 10. And why not uh, uh, celebrate part 10 with uh, the latest edition of uh, um, feedback as a new feature to beat cutter. And uh, to celebrate that, you has also provided some additional codes only for subscribers to the channel. So if you are not a subscriber, just uh, subscribe now. So um, feedback, it's uh, a big deal for BitCutter because uh, it um, brings uh, BitCutter to a different uh, uh, position as an application where it can self-generate additional uh, sound for experimentation purposes. So, and that is absolutely great. So uh, let's um, uh, let's see how that works. I try to go as low as I can so that you can get an understanding of how to set feedback up as one example, because there may be many other cases. I have to say I waited for a bit before um, introducing the next part in the series of tutorials because I wanted some of the features to be added to beat cutter. Now, now those have been added. So that is great, so we can proceed. So we are inside the AUM. So I'm going to create a MIDI channel and also an audio channel. And it will become apparent very um, soon why I need both channels, because as you know, BitCutter just need a, an effect channel. So in the audio channel, I'm going to search for ISIM as a synth, but um, you can choose something else. I'm going to use it as an input source. Then on uh, the MIDI channel, I'm going to do choose step bad as a MIDI processor, and I'm going to link the two. So I'm going to have step bad to generate uh, a set of MIDI notes uh, using ISIM. And then of course, for those uh, notes to become that input audio source inside BitCutter. So let's load BitCutter as well inside uh, um, as a, an effect on that first audio channel. Right, okay, so StepBud is connected to ISIM. And let's go inside StepBud and uh, let's maxi maximize the window. And let's create a pattern, something like uh, um, so for notes. So let's remove the other four, like so. Let's change the velocity to be uh, higher or maximum, why not? And let's decrease uh, uh, the rate from one eighth to one fourth, otherwise it's too fast. Now let's disable um, um, the big cut effect for a moment and let's click play to hear what we have. Okay, it's great. We have this preset up time, I'm going to uh, keep that for ISIM at the moment is uh, good enough. And and this is where it becomes uh, creative. You can choose different preset, different sound sources to experiment. Um, so let's reintroduce bit cutter and maximize the window. Um, from um, the previous part in the series of tutorials, you'll find the bit cutter has changed quite a bit. There are a lot of additional features which I will cover going through. For example, um, possibility to add multiple templates have been added. Also, when you change um, values, you have this bar which shows you when reminds you what the parameter is, you have different value. If you double click on something, you have this new uh, nice addition where you can choose different values as well. So there has been a lot of uh, new things which have been added. So let's go back to the main uh, tab, which I already um, introduced as well, the input and trigger tab tabs in the uh, previous uh, uh, tutorials. Let's go here on the new preset and let's click on the any preset and set it so that we ensure that we are at um, uh, the default initialized preset. Um, so how does feedback works? Well, feedback is about taking the output which is, which is uh, being generated through BitCutter and then introduce that output as an input. That is why it's called feedback. And if you do that, um, once you have enough audio and signal going through, you can disable the input 
source and effectively you have a, a, a signal audio which is already inside BitCutter which will constantly go through BitCutter to the output and back to the input and so forth and it becomes a loop. And, a, a loop. and if you have um, set that up correctly with input and triggers etc then uh, it can go up to indefinitely really or other times you find that slowly it will come to to die as a signal and you may have to introduce different changes um, to the way that bit cutter is set up to sustain that sound okay so i am in order to enable uh feedback you need to go to the reverb tab which we haven't explored yet in the series but let's click on the reverb tab here and you find the button down here which says f for feedback and then C4 for channel four. Let's click on that to enable it. So practically the feedback is going to be redirected to through channel four. Let's go to input. Let's choose uh, um, the first uh, input bus and we're going to use the first four for the purpose of the tutorial. Let's set that to uh, channel number one. So it will take the audio from, uh, um, from Eisen. And when I have enough audio, I will switch uh, uh, channel one to, uh, sorry, um, input bus one from channel one to channel four, which will be where I get the feedback. Um, so the audio signal, signal, which is coming from the output. We're going to set uh, two, three, and four to receive from the internal ch channel number one, which means it will be the same as the first uh, input bus. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to input bus one and let's click on trigger. Let's click play and let's adjust the sensitiveness and also length attack and release. Okay. We can see um, cells being recorded. Okay, let's uh, go back to uh, the trigger. Let's do the same for uh, input bus C2 to 4 while we play. Okay, the metrics have been filled in. Perfect. Let's go to the reverb tab and decrease the volume so you can hear better my voice. What I'm going to do also, I'm going to add for all the eight different outputs here, I'm going to add some reverb and it's very simple to do that. So you go to output here and you click um, to each one of the input buses and you increase the reverb here on this slider. Okay, almost there. Perfect. So nice filled in i think we are about ready i'm going to change from uh, channel number one for input bus one to channel number four so it will start to take only the signal from the feedback from the output then i'm going to stop the play in aum the other thing i'm going to do i'm going to change the sequencer here to be in position three as you can see, move to position three. So they will play one line after the other. And I will explain that uh, in other tutorials as well. Going to decrease a little bit the volume so you can hear my voice. And as you can hear, it's self-generative now. It will continue to generate sound and that sound will actually morph into something completely different than what it was at the beginning.
you can already hear that the sound is quite different from what we had at the beginning. And this is great because um, it will allow you to experiment with different sounds. As I just mentioned a moment ago, I moved the position of the sequence set to position number three, that is three. It was on position number one, and that is because the sequencer will play in this way from um, step one to eight. And in this position, it will play only um, one output at a time in this direction. Instead, if it was left on position number one, it would have played all the different cells, for example, on one together, which is not what I wanted to do. Okay, so you can continue like this, you can uh, uh, leave it um, ongoing and the sound will morph into something completely different and that's the beauty of using um, the feedback function which has been added to BitCutter. Of course, at any point you may want to adjust the parameters. Um, if you see, uh, if you hear the sound uh, uh, dying a little bit, you might want to adjust, for example, going through the control tab for each of the input buses, uh, the level of octave and semitones or cents, but that is up to you. Okay, perfect. I hope you enjoy. Uh, I mean, you could stay here for quite a while, but the longer you stay, the more the sound will, uh, will change. But the for, for the purpose of the tutorial, you have heard what that could actually do and what that could achieve. I hope you enjoy. See you next time. Bye.